you think of some people you want to hear that news? That Jesus loves them like he loves you? You can be seated. Hope you did. Hope you're thinking about that. Because this season coming up, the next few weeks, Palm Sunday, Easter Sunday, I promise you there are people that will, that will come. They'll, they'll visit with us and they'll check it out. You know, and the reality is they may not come again for a while and that's okay. I won't make fun of them, I promise, but they'll hear a clear, compelling message of hope if you'll bring them. So I'm asking you to bring them that day. Um, hold on just a second. Okay. Um, you got lots of people that, w- that would like to join us here that, that are around. So I'm going to go ahead and do a, do a little pre-Easter kind of team meeting here because a lot of you guys are regulars at FOS and some of you are guests. And by the way, guests, thank you for coming today. My name is Jeff Hewson. I'm the pastor here. And I have the privilege of leading an amazing team that does amazing work. And I'll tell you some more about that in a second. But, um, but let's talk a little bit about Easter prep. Um, we're going to add another service on Easter Sunday. Um, and we're going to add that at 8 o'clock. Now, I'm inviting you and encouraging you, if you can, if you don't have little ones, to come earlier, if you can. Okay, come, you know, just shift one service down, if you can do it. Now, if you can't, if it's a real hard shift, then don't worry about it. I'm not going to beat you up, and we're not taking attendance. Okay, so it's not going to be like, well, hey, you should normally come at 11. You still came at 11. What are you doing? It's not going to be that way. It's just, if you feel led, then shift down one service. And if you shift down that service, you might consider helping us with some other things that need to be done around here, either before the service normally come or after. You can see me or Laura or Meredith or Mike, anybody on staff afterwards, and I promise we have something you can do to help us on Easter Sunday. Okay, so I uh, hope you'll pray about that, um, and we'll, we'll go from there. Now, I understand we ran out of worship guides today, and that's a good problem. We'll, we'll fix that next week. That's on us. Um, well, we think we ran out. We're not sure, because Meredith is out of town on vacation, and she handles those, so we don't know if they're tucked away somewhere. Like, we don't, we, so we've got a team out looking for them right now. If they come in, then we'll get them in your hands and, and go from there. But I apologize for that, uh, that we, did, we didn't have those. Now, about our team. We have this amazing team that serves here. We call them the dream team. People that, 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 that serve and, and give. If, if you were at the dream team madness event about eight days ago, would you please stand? If you were, if you were at, that, at that event, would you please stand? Okay, and then if you serve on the Dream Team, even if you weren't at the event, would you please stand? If you serve somewhere on the Dream Team, you're, you're, you, you're a greeter, you work with kids, you do something here, would you please stand? All right, give it up for these people. Good. Thank you so much. This is what it takes to, to, for, for the God's kingdom to advance here. This is what, what the church is about. And, and I'm going to be talking about the Dream Team in a little bit. I want you to consider, prayerfully consider, joining the Dream Team because it's going to help you grow. Not, not just because it helps the body, not just because it helps the church, but because it's going to help you. And really what we're all about here is helping you grow into all that God meant for you to be. If we can get that done, then it's going to be amazing in your life. And that's, that's our hope. Um, the second part of the pep rally is this, that yesterday a good chunk of you showed up and worked. If you showed up and worked yesterday, you guys stand for a second. If you showed up and worked yesterday, your eyes for a second, just for a second. Man, they got so much work done yesterday. It's amazing. Okay, give it up for them. <laughs> Tons of landscaping. Things got cleaned. We have, we have electricity that works in places it hasn't worked in months. Um, we have all kinds of stuff that's like happening that you maybe wouldn't know if you're not around here a lot, but it's just really cool. And, and just want to say thank you for you to that serve. And thank you that you give. When you give, you make all this happen. You make all this happen. So that's enough said about that. But um, uh, what... I'm going to, I'm going to share a, a video with you after I pray, and this video will give you kind of a capsule of some things I want to talk to you about today, about church. Today we're talking about the vision of Foch Community Church, and I think you'll leave here knowing a whole lot more about who we are, what we're trying to get done, and how you can participate in the plan that we have. And the reason I want you to participate, and I'll go ahead and tell you right up front, I'm a sales guy, all right? That's what I do. I, I try to sell you some Jesus, all right? Okay? And I want you, I want you to leave here... Uh, more committed than ever to following Jesus, not just as somebody that's going to give you life when you're dead, but somebody who can give you life now while you're still alive, okay? So that's what I'm going to be working hard to do today is to try to get you to test drive this Jesus thing and to take this ride with us. And I promise you, um, it'll, it'll be amazing for you. Uh, in sales, there's a thing called the puppy dog clothes. You know what the puppy dog clothes is? I bet Ron Shields does. If I can get you to take home the puppy... There's a good chance you're not bringing the puppy back. 
Now, I'm not saying that Jesus is a puppy. But I am saying if you'll test drive and test the promises of Jesus, I think you'll find them to be true. And that if I could get you to, to test drive this thing called faith and life in Jesus, that you would be hooked. And that's my job today is to hook you on that. So I'm telling you right up front where I'm going, what my mission is, what I'm trying to get done. So would you watch this video with me? And then I'll come back. Oh, I said I'd pray first. I'll pray. Okay. God, thank you for calling us to be a part of your church, part of your body, part of your movement in the world. Now, you be clear and strong and help each one of us decide what we're supposed to do with the news we're given today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Check out this video. Churches are full of people. The broken, the lonely, the wanderers, the hopeful, the enthusiastic, the lost, the passionate, and the faithful. For many, this gathering represents the whole of their church experience. They'll listen attentively to a message, they'll sing a few songs, they'll be invited to pray, and then they'll return to their lives. But for some, questions will start bubbling to the surface of their faith. Is this the extent of what Jesus intended for his followers? Who is the church for? Why does the world need the church, and what is the church after all? Well, the church isn't the building where people attend weekly services. It's not a program, a list of rules, or a philosophy. The church isn't a political affiliation, a country club, or a holiday tradition. The church was never intended to be just an assembly of people wearing nice clothes and saying nice things. The church is all the followers of Jesus everywhere. The Greek word for church is the word ekklesia. It's the combination of two words, ek, which means out, and kaleo, meaning called. Thus, the church, the ecclesia, means the called out ones. In other words, the church, the collective body of all the followers of Jesus everywhere, is called out by someone for something, for a purpose. The beginning of the book of Acts has Jesus calling his disciples to a task, bringing something called the gospel, the good news, to all the world. And this gospel would go out to all the outsiders, the forgotten, the abandoned, and the excluded. And they, those outsiders, would see and receive that good news as actually good. And when Jesus talked about the gospel, it was always in conjunction with something else, something called the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom of God, God's purposes are made apparent. There's justice and righteousness. There's hope for the poor and for the oppressed. And under the kingdom of God, mercy and forgiveness take precedence over bitterness and resentment. Now, people previously deemed to be far from God are brought into his family, adopted as his sons and daughters. And the fullness of the kingdom of God, according to Jesus, is not merely expressed as a way for people to escape an evil world when they die. Rather, the good news of God's kingdom is about the announcement of God's eternity moving into the present world and carrying on into the life to come. The people who belong to Jesus join him in his worldwide restoration project. And the called out ones, the church, are committed to advancing this good news of God's kingdom into the world. Not as a means of helping people avoid the world, but rather to see God's kingdom life being made real here and now. The whole church with the power of the whole gospel for the whole world. Now that's cool, isn't it? That guy writes really fast. It's unbelievable how fast that guy can, can write that stuff up there. So I want to just bring you into, into the vision of Folks Community Church. This will help you understand a whole lot of who we are. And, um, and I'm pitching, I'm selling, I'm telling you, I want you to be a part of this journey with us. Because I believe if you'll fully participate in this journey, that you will grow. And that in that growth, you'll find the most exciting adventure you've ever been on in your life. And that's what I want for you. Is that Okay. I mean, I just, I'm begging you, man, please hear me. I'm selling you, but the reason I'm selling you is because, because what I'm offering is really, really good for you. And around here, we smoke what we're selling, okay? Just tell you, we do. So, we, we do. And so, uh, so it's good, just so you want to know. And so, here's our mission, you know? Here's our mission, to invite skeptics and people who don't usually go to church to shift from being spectators and to full-on participators in the adventures of a child of the king. That's what we're going after. We want you to move from being a person that's, just, that's maybe skeptical about this faith to being a person that would actually consider it. You know, and let me just say a word about that. It's really okay if you are skeptical. I'm really glad you're here. And, and this is what I want you to know. It's okay to bring your friends who are skeptics here. I'm okay having discussions with people that, that don't believe everything I believe. And I hope you will be too. I'm okay just talking things through and talking about what's in the Bible. And, and this has been my experience that, 
that the Bible and Jesus will stand scrutiny and it will stand honest inquiry. If you really want to know and if you really honestly dig deep, I think you'll find that Jesus can stand your scrutiny and he can, he can take it and, and the Bible can stand up to your questions and God can, can handle your questions and your skepticism. It's amazing that our God, the God that we preach, this Jesus, came close to us and he invites us into a relation with him even if we don't know everything and even if we have questions. Isn't that good news? So, so we really want Fost Community Church, and we have wanted this to be true from the very beginning, to be a church for those who don't normally go to church. Now, what we know about that is, what we've learned is sometimes it's very offensive to church people. And that's really good news. Now take this the right way. We really aren't designed, nor have we ever been designed, nor has it been our desire, to just reach people who are looking for the next church fix. We're just not. What we're really interested in doing is reaching people who are maybe skeptical, who maybe haven't been to church, who aren't sure about all this stuff, who don't have all the answers, and who don't have their life all together. We invite, on purpose, imperfect people here. Because I promise you, the preacher is imperfect. Okay? Yeah, you can give it up for that. So, this is really good news for most of us, but... Wait a minute. Oh, over there, I see that perfect person that showed up today. I am so sorry to disappoint, but this place is going to be horrible for you. Because I promise you, all the rest of us are all messed up. So you better find a church that's more perfect because this is not it, okay? If you're okay with a church where, where people are honestly trying to follow Jesus and we mess up sometimes, but we're really, really trying and we really want to love you well, if you're okay with it being authentic and real and a little rustic like that sometimes, this is a great place. And I want to tell you right now, it's designed to be just like that. It's designed to be real and honest and authentic because we think that's what, this, we think that's who Jesus was. And we think that Jesus was okay with people whose lives were messed up, who had made poor choices, who needed a Savior, and who knew they needed a Savior. We're pretty confident that's who Jesus came to save. Matter of fact, Jesus said himself, he said, you know, it's the, the sick are the ones who need a doctor. But the people that are already well, they don't need, they don't need a doctor. Well... Most of us here, unless you crept in and we don't know you very well yet, most of us need a doctor. Most of us need a Savior. And uh, if you count yourselves among those who needs a Savior, you're in good company here. And that's the people that we're trying to invite and encourage to come to FOS. And that makes us a little unusual, and that means that sometimes... Um, we'll use a secular song or we'll, we'll use something from the movies or a book that's, that's being read popularly and those sorts of things. We'll do those things on purpose to connect into a world outside the walls of a church. Does that make sense? And so if you're cool with that, this is a great place. If you're uncool with that, you're going to be miserable. There's no reason to be miserable. There's other churches that will never talk about anything outside of the, the how do I say that? They're going to focus on religion and may try to make you more religious. And we're not interested in making you more religious. We're interested in connecting you with Jesus in a vibrant relationship and for you taking a journey with him that will amaze you and astound you and challenge you and challenge your faith and build you up, make you crazy at times, and yet bring you to the end of a life where you're like, wow, that was amazing. What a journey that was. And when you, when you finish it, you slide into heaven. You're like, dude, Jesus, boom, that was awesome. Yeah, that's what we want. I'm not interested in just getting you on a rapture rocket. I mean, we're not just trying to get out of here. We're trying to make a difference while we're here, okay? So we got some time. Jesus didn't, he said, well, you don't know when I'm coming back. So, so it matters what we're trying to do. So, so I, want to, I want to invite you into a full-on participation in an adventure that Jesus has out in front of you. And every one of our adventures are a little bit different. And yet there's some things we do together to help get you going in this journey. When we get you going in this journey to help kickstart you and to give you some training wheels and to, and to kind of get you moving, that's what we want to do. 
So, so our, this comes to our process. What's our process here at Foch Community Church for getting you kick-started and off to, your, off to the races with a faith that matters and, and with a journey that matters? Um, here's our process. So I'm going to go through some things we do here at Foch Community Church, and they all begin with P. Now, I'm really going to preach today because everything begins with the same letter. Okay, that's what good preachers do, right? Everything begins with the same letter. Okay, so we, we preach and lift Jesus up at our weekend worship experiences. That's what we want to do. Every time we're together, we're going to talk about Jesus. And again, this can, can be highly offensive because Jesus is controversial, isn't he? And the good news of Jesus is controversial. Why on earth would God send his son to die on a cross for you and for me? That doesn't really make logical sense. But the, the reality is he's God and we're not, Right. So this is my promise to you. If you will invite people to come join us here, if you'll invite them to worship, they will hear about Jesus. And they'll know how, about God's plan for their lives, and they'll know how to connect with that. It, just because we're inviting people that don't know Jesus and don't know much about, about the Bible doesn't mean I'm going to water things down. I'm absolutely not. Matter of fact, we're going to go hard after what's in here and after the truth. I just want it to be clear. I don't want it to be confusing. All right? There's a difference. It will be, it'll be real truth. That really matters, but it will be really clear. That's the hope. That's what we're going after. So we're going to preach and lift Jesus up. And then we're going to prepare you. That's the second P. We're going to prepare you. And the way we prepare you, we invite you to growth track and to join the dream team so we can build you up. Now, when you come and join us here, uh, the growth track is your absolute best on-ramp to Foch Community Church. You're going to learn about who we are, how we're wired. You're going to go further into, into all this process stuff. You're going to know exactly how to get engaged with a small group how to, how to serve somewhere that matters to you and that fits your wiring. Um, we're going to take, take those growth track few hours we have together, and we're really going to prepare you to step into the work that God has uniquely for you. Because I know when I, when I get you there and you're connected to that unique plan that God has for you, that man, your life's going to take on a whole new meaning. And that's what I want for you. I want you to just be, I want you to be juiced and jazzed. You know, the, the thing, the best thing to do to overcome addictions is to replace it with something better. Well, I'm giving you something better. I'm giving you this journey with Jesus and come join us here. And this is way better than other stuff you might be interested in. The, the best way to deal with, with persistent sin is to find something better to do with your time. And I'm not talking about just making you busy. I just, but I do want to connect you with meaningful things that will help you take growth steps in your life. Growth Track is your absolute best next step. If you've not been to Growth Track, please join us in April. Here's what we're going to do. We do have Growth Track 401 today, but that's not really the very best starting blocks for you. The best starting blocks are Growth Track 101. That happens the Sunday after Easter. We're going to do 101, 301, and 401 in April. We're going to skip 201 in April. We'll come back in May and do that one. Okay, so if you could join us for those three Sundays after a second service, 1245 to 2, I promise that little bit of investment of time will make a huge difference in your ability to travel with Jesus and to connect to the smorgasbord that we're putting before you. Here's what we're doing at Folks Community Church. Everything I'm talking about today in this process, we're making available to you to help you grow. Everything we do here is wired to make disciples who make disciples who make disciples, meaning people who are on an adventure with Jesus. Who invite others to be on an adventure with Jesus. Who invite others to be on an adventure with Jesus. And so everything we do is, is set up around that. So I'll say this. If you're starving spiritually, you have not pulled up to the buffet and gotten out a fork. So I'm telling you, let the beast eat, get your fork out, and let's go. Okay, because there's stuff here for you. There's stuff here for you, man. Let's go. Let's, let's do this. See, get, get involved with this. Come to Growth Track and see how you can connect and how you can grow. And then um, after Growth Track, I want you to serve somewhere on the Dream Team. I want you to get, get engaged with us. Because when you serve and do something that matters to you and we get you in the right seat doing the right thing, you will be energized in your faith. You'll be grown in your faith. Because you'll learn to trust Jesus to help you do what he's asking you to be a part of. Now listen. This is for the brand newest person. If today's your very first day here, all this is for you. Dana and Adonia Anderson, who were here at first service, their very first Sunday here, they heard about Growth Track. They stuck around for Growth Track that day. And, they, and, and it's been revolutionary ever since. They were, they were already Jesus followers. But man, they've gone to a whole other level because they engaged right away. And they said, I want to jump in. I want to make a difference. And they were here yesterday serving, making a difference. And that's what we hope for you. So we want to prepare you by getting you around, the, around Growth Track and engaged with the Dream Team so you can begin to develop friendships 
and relationships and see how God can use you. Makes sense so far? So we're, we're going to preach about Jesus. We're going to prepare you to grow. And the next thing we're going to do, we're, we want to protect you. We want to protect you uh, from, <laughs> from crazy people and, and stuff that, that would drag you away from your faith. And we want to do that by providing a small group for you, a place where you can connect with other people who want to follow Jesus. Now, I'm going to tell you about our small groups. Most of our small groups are led by leaders who are all jacked up. They just are. Just like the preacher. Okay? Now, what I mean is this. They're not perfect people. But, man, our small group leaders, they, they love Jesus, and they're trying to follow him, and they want to help you try to follow him, and they want to provide an environment for you to grow. So would you consider joining a small group and, and forming a community? Here's why it's important to me that you do this. Because life's going to happen. On your journey with us, if you stick around folks long enough, there's going to come a moment when life is going to happen to you. The bus is just going to run smack dab over you. And then, guess what it's going to do? Beep, 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 beep. It's going to back up. That's how life is going to be for some of you, some of these seasons. And if we don't have you connected in a small group, it's going to be very hard for us to help you like we could. It's very hard for us to get hold of you in that time when your life is falling apart and to catch the pieces if you don't already have some friendships built. You don't have a small group. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you, that's on you. It's not on me. That's on you. That's your job. We're providing it. you got to come seek it out. And we'll help you connect. And we'll start new small groups for you. You might even be one who needs to start a small group. And that's fine. You need to come through growth track. We'll get you wired and equipped for that. But, but we want you to begin to have a community of people that want to follow Jesus. And it will help you. But that's your job, not mine. We're providing the buffet. you got to eat. Make sense? Is that too hard? You mad? Some people are mad right now. It's okay. You'll figure it out later. Okay? Um, I love, this is when Ju- Julie will go home later. She'll say, you were really mean. Okay. okay. I'm not being mean. I'm telling you this because I love you. I do. I love you. And I want you to grow. And I wouldn't be a good coach for you if I didn't tell you the truth. If I didn't tell you that you need to be in a small group, I wouldn't serve you well. You need, you need a community of people to run with, people that want to follow Jesus. And inside that, I hope you find what I call your A-team. You could also call it a personal board of directors. Uh, it's people that will really do life with you and help you figure things out. They'll celebrate when things are great, and they'll, they'll challenge you when you need to be challenged, and they'll pick you up when your life has fallen apart and when the bus has ran over you. You need these relationships. Christianity the way the first church experienced it was not a solo endeavor. It was a team sport. And at Foast Community Church, it's still a team sport. I want you to hear how the early church was described in the book of Acts chapter 2. This is about the early church. A deep sense of awe came over them all. And the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together constantly and shared everything they had. They sold their possessions and shared the proceeds with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day kind of like we're doing here. They met in homes for the Lord's Supper, like goes on in their small groups, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, like goes on in many of our small groups, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, the Lord added to the group those who were being saved. You see, when, when the outside world sees a group of people that love each other and they're committed to each other, that are committed to lifting Jesus up, and that, and that are unified around that purpose and that plan, it's so attractive to the world that they can't help but come. So there's a couple of things going on here. First of all, Jesus said if we'll lift him up, that he'll draw all people to himself. The second thing is, is that when, when, when the world sees a group of followers of Jesus unified, rallied around the same cause of lifting Jesus up, and helping each other out, and picking each other up, and dusting each other off, and loving each other through the good times and the hard times, then the world is very attracted to that. That's one of my hopes for this church, that we'll get better and better at doing that. I think we're good right now, but we're not where we're going to be. We'll get better at these things. And as we do, the world outside of here, I promise you, if they, most, most of your friends and family, they've never experienced anything like this. They've never had a chance to be loved this way. They've never really owned the idea that Jesus loves them. They just haven't. And because of that, they seek things that are going to hurt them. 
And they live lives that are less than what they could be. So why wouldn't you want them to be a part of this? Why wouldn't you extend yourself and risk a little bit to ask them to come join you? And to be loved like you've been loved. And to be cared for the way you're cared for. I think it's important to do that. So that early church, man, they had it going on, and it was good. It was evident to the world around them. I want us to be that church. I want us to be that church where, where people say, man, Jesus is doing something there. So um, that's a little bit about small groups and what they can do. So we want to preach the gospel and lift Jesus up. He'll draw people to himself. We want to prepare you. Ephesians 2.10 says, you're God's workmanship created in advance for good works. We want to do that. We want to protect you. We want you to be wrapped up in that kind of bubble like that Acts 2 church was. And then we want to propel you. I want to get you out into God's mission for the world. I want you to get out into his, his adventure for the world. Because when we get you out on this mission that God has in front of us, then you begin to have to have faith in God. You see, it's impossible to please God if you don't have faith. And if you never do anything that requires faith, it makes it pretty hard to please God. So I'm asking you and inviting you to take some adventurous steps with us this year. To go further in, in adventuring with Jesus in the mission than you ever have before. Now I'm going to give you three simple ideas on how you could do that. We're providing some collective experiences for you to participate in the mission that God has in front of us. The, the first one I want to talk to you about is Easter invites. Now some of you may have gotten these cards coming in. Did any of you get these cards? If you got these cards... Look like this. Did you get them yet? You're, you're probably going to get them on your way out. I think you get them on your way out today is what I asked to happen. But it's a really cool card. Um, and, and we printed a bunch of them because we get, we get quantity discounts. Once you hit a certain number, it's like for 10 bucks, you get a thousand more or something crazy. So, so we, just, we, have a, we have a lot of these and we want you to just use them. And if you want to put them up in doctor's offices and stuff or at the you know, Kroger or whatever, fine, Starbucks, put them up. That's fine. But that's not the best tool. That's not the best way to do it. You know what the best thing to do with this is? You go to a friend, and you give them the, with the front of the card, you say, listen, I would love for you to be my guest on Easter at my church. I would love for you to be my guest at Easter at my church. Okay, let's try to get that first part down. I would love for you to be my guest. You say that with me. I would love for you to be my guest. If you can do that, the rest is downhill. Hand them the card. And it has everything they need to know on it. It gives a map to here, the website, um, everything they need to know about service times. It's all, it's all back here. On Easter, we're doing the 8 o'clock, 9, 30, 11 thing that we talked about earlier. So it's all here. Plus, there's some, some things about our live sports camp and Celebrate Centerfield that are on here as well. So in case they can't come to Easter, there's still some other value to this card. Does this make sense? So I'm asking you to have the courage to say, I would love for you to be my guest and join me at Easter. And what I mean is, meet them at the door. Go by, pick them up, let them follow you, whatever you got to do. Does it make sense? Extend yourself for the good of them and for the, for the good news of Jesus, for, for Jesus' sake. Extend yourself. And I hope you'll do that for us. Um, the card is not very preachy. Matter of fact, it's not preachy at all. It's kind of cute. We hope it's clever. Um, and the, the idea is that I think it, it tells them right away when they see the card, they go, oh, that's kind of different. And we want them to know it's kind of different. It's not, it's... You need to know this as someone inviting. They're going to hear about Jesus. It won't just be a cute, clever, funny day. They will hear about Jesus, I promise. They'll hear about this powerful resurrection news that everybody needs to know. They're going to hear those things, I promise. But I hope you'll give, I hope you'll give one of these out. Well, let's practice this for a second, um, just so you can get over some jitters about this, okay? All right, pretend like you got a card. Take your card in two hands like this. Everybody pretend like you got one right now. Here we go. Here we go. Now, here's what I want you to do. Now, I want you to just point it out to me, and I want you to say this. I would love for you to be my guest. On Easter, at my church. No! No! Now, here we go. Now, here's the deal. You've gotten your no. I said no. Now, that's the worst it's going to get. Check your pulse. Everybody grab your pulse. Check your wrist. You still here? Everybody still good? You still breathing? Got a pulse? You're breathing? So guess what? If they say no, guess what? It's okay. Take your little card and go to somebody else. I hate to say that, but Jesus kind of said that. Say, if somebody rejects you, just shake the dust off your feet and move on. 
Don't worry about it. But, but do this. Please, please prayerfully do this. Don't just flippantly do this, but prayerfully think about a person, two, three, four, that you could take one of these cards to and give them a heartfelt invite. That would make a world of difference for them. You could totally change their life. You could totally revolutionize their experience with God and Jesus and all that. Wouldn't that be cool if God used you that way? So that's a simple way to be on this adventure with Jesus, to take one of these cards and just get it in somebody's hands. So, so far, oh, and some other things you could do. That's mentioned here, the Alive Sports Camp. Some of you that have an interest in Jesus and sports and you actually love kids, you could join us at the Alive Sports Camp and it's going to be so much fun. But I will, I will warn you right now that last year, Laura filled up with workers really early. So if this has an interest to you and we can't take everybody, um, please consider doing that. And then the last thing. Laura, where are you, by the way? Please stand right where you are so people know who you are. This is Laura. She leads our children and youth. Yep, give it up for Laura. If you're interested in, in this, just you can email her, Laura, at FostChurch.com, or you can see her. All right, now, the next thing you could do, if you, if you want to take a family mission adventure, you could take the same concept we used at a live sports camp and transfer it down to Charleston, South Carolina. We're going to have an amazing experience there, working with the Dream Center in North Charleston. And... Um, and we're, we'll, be, we'll be working there and, and doing a backyard Bible club. This is a live sports camp, renovating a, a house, doing some, um, some work on a playground and, and building a habitat house. It's going to be amazing. Um, Julie Fusen, right here, she's going to be leading that experience. Julie, stand up so they can see you. All right. And Julie's going to be available right over here in the cafe, right out that back door. You can come here and turn right. And she'll be available after worship to talk to you and share ideas. And if you've already showed interest in the trip, please stop by and see her. She just has a little bit of information for you. Okay, is that right, babe? Anything else? Yeah. And just get out of your comfort zone. That's all I'm saying. Get out of the comfort zone. But you're big on the comfort zone, Julie. <laughs> but, no, no, the reality is she's really gotten out of it. She's stretched, man. It's exciting to watch what God's doing with her. She's stretched past her comfort zone. <laughs> yep. Yep, that's right. Yeah, it's kind of rough, isn't it? So, so we, want to, we want to preach the gospel. We want to prepare you. We want to protect you. We want to propel you into the mission adventure God has for you. And then we want to partner with you. We want to partner with you. We want you to find this life that God has for you. We want you to really understand all that Jesus has out in front of you that, uh, that he would like to give to you. And, and, and we're going to do that through, um, through coming alongside you in some, in some close community and, and just a one on three or four kind of discipleship relationships that we'll be launching into this fall and then in, in the years ahead. Can't talk too much about it right now because it's still in the oven, it's cooking. But there's a team of people who are preparing to do this. This will be vital, important work and it's going it's to really help you grow in Christ. So pray for us and pray that we're, we get off to a great start with this and in the years ahead, hopefully all of you will have a chance to partner and to grow. And it's not because we have one person that's better than anybody else, it's just that sometimes there's a person who has more, more experience with Jesus who can help you. Who can help you apprentice yourself to Jesus and help you learn from Him. Okay? Okay, then so we want to partner with you in that. And then the last thing we want you to pound the pavement with us. We want you to invite people to come. Do I hope that Folks Community Church grows numerically? Yes. Boldly, blatantly, yes. Because every single person that comes here is a person that Jesus died for. Every single person that comes here is a person that, that God provided for and that wants to come. I know the heart of the Father because Jesus tells us about the heart of the Father. Jesus tells a story about a rich man who throws a, he's going to throw this amazing party. And he sends out invites. And I imagine the invites were probably pretty elaborate invites. In today's terms, they might even be like a gift box invite. Like you get this beautiful gift box. And it's all dressed in like red with gold gold ribbon around it and inside is this elaborate is this really elaborate ornately done invitation and it says the king is throwing a party and you're invited and so the king sends out these emissaries these people to go out and tell other people hey the king's throwing a party and and he's invited you here's your invitation but those emissaries those ambassadors went out and issued invitations and a lot of the people said i'm not going i'm not going to come So do you know what the king did? He said, hey, that's not going to work out for me. I want this house full. I want this place filled up. I want to throw a big party because I don't want anybody to, be, to miss out on this party. So he sends out those ambassadors again. He says, listen, go out to all the highways and the hedges. Go find all kinds of people and invite them all to come because I want my house to be full. Now, who's the king in Jesus' story? 
God. It's the heart of the Father. It's the heart of God that, that the house be full, that, he, that, that we invite people to come join us in this great adventure, in this great mission that he has out in front of us. I, don't, I want it not only for you, but I want it for your friends and for the friends of your friends, for them to know who Jesus is. So I'm asking you to pound the pavement with us and invite people in the same way Jesus sent, tells in that story. Keep going out. Keep inviting. Keep telling you. And I've got to be honest with you. Some of you who, who want to be Jesus followers or who would like to go further with Jesus, I've got to tell you, it's just true. Jesus expects you to participate in his plan for the people around you. He expects it. It's an expectation of Jesus that you participate in his plan. It's not okay that you sit on the bench. It's not okay that you just watch. It's not okay that you sit on it. It's not okay that you say, well, I'm just living as an example. Sometimes you need to use words. Two, both, okay? Uh, yes, I want you to live as a great example. Don't get me wrong, but sometimes we need to also use words and we need to have enough courage to really follow Jesus in a way that is a little bit risky. Yeah? This is, this is my preach. Risky for Jesus is better than whiskey for something. I don't know. But I think being involved in, the, in this risk that Jesus in, in, invites us to is a great way to live your life. And it gives you a sense of adventure and purpose. And what some of you have been looking for is found right here in following Jesus. It's right here. Okay? So um, our purpose. Let me get, get to our purpose. My, and this is really just very personal to me. Is I really want you, and I'm talking to every single one of you, 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 you and you and you, it's what I want for you. I want you to become a fired up, adventurous, obedient child of our great God and King. And I want you to be one of those kinds of adventurous, obedient children who invites others along for the journey too. Because that leads to our bottom line at FOS. Disciples who make disciples who make disciples. And... This will tell you a little bit about de defining what a disciple is. Disciples are handcrafted apprentices of Jesus who know that they're dearly loved children of God, who love God back, and who love their neighbors like they love themselves, and who expand the neighborhood. I mean, that fits, and that's a lot of teaching and a lot of scripture backed up in that, and I could break that down for you if you ever want to, but Jesus had a lot to say about this. Who's a disciple, and what does a disciple do? Back in the early days of folks, and we were dreaming this forward, we were still in the basement of our house. And Tim Gooch was one of the founding family members, and, and Tim helped us frame this up, frame it up this way, and he came up with this mantra, which I think fits really well still today. Love God, love your neighbor, expand the neighborhood. Pretty simple, pretty true, pretty powerful. So this is a little bit about the vision of Folks Community Church. I hope you're excited about being a part of that. Are you excited about being a part of this? Give it up if you are. I got half of you. That's good. We'll take that. Good. No, really. I, I'm very excited to be a part of this journey that God has us on. And, I, and I'm praying for you that you'll take the full ride with us. Because when you take the full ride, you'll grow. The adventure will come. And it'll be amazing for you. You know, we're getting...